on. Hey, everybody, what's happening? This is uh, your Orange Bloods YouTube channel. I'm Jason Sukamel. Uh, beside me here is Cole Patterson. This is only our second time to do this, Cole. We've been saying, I said it last time, we've said since the summer we were going to do these more regularly. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're kind of getting, I won't say pushed in that direction, but we needed the nudge in that direction to kind of light a fire under us. So, you know, we are closing in on early signing period. I was looking, it's one month and six days, if my math yeah. is right. Nine plus six is 15, I think, right? So um, one month and six <laughs> days from the <early laughs> signing period, man. So mm -hmm. things are going to start heating up in a hurry. Uh, and then, of course, right after that, you get into January visits. You and I were just talking off camera about all American bowls and our plans to be in Orlando and San Antonio, mm -hmm. and the second signing period. And you got a lot of guys who are going to be announcing at these all American bowls more this year, it feels like, yeah, than I've yeah. seen in the past. Normally, most guys are committed before those games and they kind of lost some of their recruiting luster, if you will. But this, I think this year we're going to have some excitement. There's going to be quite a few guys that will be announcing at these all American. Um, but before we get into that, that's, that's probably a conversation for down the road. Let's focus on the more immediate future. Uh, Texas coming home, uh, licking some wounds on a four game losing streak, but this is a weekend that the UT staff has targeted as Probably its biggest recruiting weekend, uh, the biggest one left before this early signing period. They're going to have some official visitors on campus. They're going to have a couple big unofficial visitors on campus for the game against Kansas Saturday night. So big weekend for Texas. Uh, we'll go through some of the names here in a minute, but just kind of where, where are your thoughts with what Texas needs to accomplish this week to kind of reestablish maybe some recruiting momentum that they've lost over the last month? Yeah, um, like you said, it's a huge recruiting weekend. You know, the last time they had a big recruiting weekend, it didn't go so well, at least on the field, you know. I mean, obviously, recruits aren't going to look at one game too much, but still, you want to win. So I think Texas does, definitely needs to, you know, have a strong performance. You know, it's Kansas. They should win the game, especially being at home. But I don't think it just a win is going to really move the needle at all. I think they need a dominant performance. I think Sark needs to show that this offense can work, that – um, they've had some bumps in the road, but, you know, they, they have – once they get their players in, it's going to work. And like I said, they, they have some big visitors on campus at, like, important positions. Um, you know, Devin Brown, the quarterback from out, out west, he's going to be visiting. He's a USC commit. Um, you know, Texas and Ole Miss are kind of getting – trying to get in that picture. And then uh, you've covered it on Orange Buzz, you know, all the offensive linemen that are going to be in town. That's probably – make a strong argument. That's probably the most important position – and the entire both, both of those all of a sudden. I mean, offensive line has mm -hmm. been a focus all year. Mm -hmm. And now all of a sudden, quarter after, uh -huh. with all due respect to Casey Thompson, Hudson Card, what we've, we've seen mm -hmm. from them struggles, all of a sudden now quarterback recruiting is paramount as well. So um, mm -hmm. that's cut you off. But yeah, you're right. It's uh, Cam Dewberry, yeah. offensive lineman, will be in town. Uh, Devon Campbell, offensive lineman, both five star offensive linemen will be in town. Kelvin Banks is supposed to be in town on an unofficial visit, another five star offensive lineman. So along with Devin Brown, the, the quarterback you mentioned. So big position, man, maybe you can find a way if you're Texas to kind of rally those kids together. Hey, man, listen, look what we could accomplish if all of you guys showed up. I mean, you guys can come in and play early and be the guys that turn this around for, for, for uh, Steve. Yeah, yeah. I was able to talk to, you know, Frisco offensive lineman Cole Hudson a couple weeks ago um, after his game against Lovejoy, and he was kind of talking about, you know, that's what they told, all the commits told the guys during the Oklahoma State game is, you know, uh, you know, it's not just a one-game thing. It's we're trying to build something. You know, Malik Hoppo, Ernest Green, two, like, two blue-chip offensive linemen were in town, and they, Cole said that, you know, they really sold them on, you know, you can start here pretty quickly, play some big, you know, big snaps, meaningful plays, and, you know, be a huge contributor on a team that they're trying to build. Um, so I think that's going to be something Texas needs to really, you know, push this weekend. I'm sure we'll get into it, but, you know, A&M's having a lot of recruiting momentum. You know, even Oklahoma is having some momentum as well. Um, Texas can't really afford to, you know, drop the ball again. You know, the Oklahoma State game didn't go as well. I think the overwhelming theme from that weekend is that recruits were still on board, uh, even after that loss. But, you know, four-game losing streaks, um, disappointing performances, if they struggle against Kansas or if they can't close the deal with some important prospects, you know, there will be some concern in Austin, to be frank. You know, I, mean, I think this is really big. As, as you mentioned, this is their last opportunity, at least for a game, 
to really get all these guys on campus. Um, we'll see if Banks does show up. But even, even if he doesn't, if he does, that's huge. Even if he doesn't, you still got some other, you know, blue chip guys that can, they're really important pieces to this class. I think when Devin Brown was first brought up, I don't think many people thought it was going to be as important as it's turned out to be. You kind of mentioned the quarterback situation now. Um, you know, USC is kind of in a limbo with their coaching situation. And he is uh, still committed to USC technically, but uh, yeah, I don't think that's going to hold long term is what I've been told. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty big. If Texas can get in there, there's some other teams, like I mentioned Ole Miss, some other teams trying to get in there as well. If they can make that impression on him, maybe he sees kind of like the offensive line, and maybe he sees a route to uh, playing early. You know, you got Malik Murphy committed as well, but um, it might be a situation where – either Casey or Hudson enter the portal, or maybe they move on uh, in some way. So maybe you need those two quarterbacks. It's a huge weekend. Texas really needs to take advantage. Yeah, I'm actually in the middle of writing my 3-2-1 column that I'll have on Orange Bloods mm -hmm. later today. And I'm one of the things I'm writing about is quarterback recruiting. And yeah. I'm just basically saying in, in a nutshell, hey, you, you just got to throw numbers at it at this point and exactly. take whoever you can and hope somebody <laughs> hits. Because I, I, I did a Longhorn lunch bunch deal last week with a bunch of guys and they asked about the Quinn Ewers rumors. I mean, they're all over the place. And I said, I haven't yeah. heard any mm -hmm. true substance, but I mean, it's, listen, it's yeah. worth talking yeah. about. And, you know, For he's sure. buried on the depth chart and Stroud's doing really well up there. So, he, you know, whatever. So, mm -hmm. but they said, well, if you get Quinn Ewers, is that lessen your chances with Arch Manning? And I was like, you know, maybe, but I, whatever bird in the hand is better than two in the bush. And yeah, you know, Quinn comes in, he can help you right away potentially. And these are all hypothetical. Let's be clear, but mm -hmm. Quinn can help you right away. You know, I think he would be a redshirt junior, I believe, when or no redshirt sophomore when Arch would be in a in a perfect case scenario when Arch yeah. would be showing up. So, you know, bottom line is you've just got to throw numbers at him and hoping Malik Murphy hurts hits or a Devin Brown or, or anybody else. Um, mm -hmm. because there's no guarantee that Casey Thompson or Hudson Card are gonna get this thing figured out. And who knows, maybe Charles Wright. Uh, the freshman quarterback that's on campus is the answer. But the bottom line is they don't have an answer right now, and that's a problem. Yeah. And it's yeah. funny, Cole. With, I think with, that's kind of – yeah, not to be cut you off, but, I mean, I think that's kind of – I'm sure we'll get into it a little bit later as well. You know, I think that's kind of – it might be a factor in why Evan Stewart is – I mean, he might mm – -hmm. maybe that's why he hasn't committed or maybe that's why a and surging is because Texas doesn't have that quarterback situation figured out. And you could say a and M struggling okay. at quarterback as well but um suddenly they've got they can two only... pretty good young ones though a&m does and yeah and they can sell them on haynes king possibly returning mm -hmm. uh, obviously because has had some big wins this season um texas really doesn't have that you know it looked like casey thompson was going to be the guy uh, first half of that oklahoma game you know the two games prior to that it looked like all right uh they got a quarterback surging for arch in the uh, 23 class so it looked, everything looked great and then it's crazy how things can change, and that's going to affect, you know, other areas of recruiting. Um, even, like, kind of like how offensive line can play a role in running backs. Receivers want to see good quarterback plays. So, I mm -hmm. think that's going to be huge for Texas. Like you said, they, as much as we've talked about Arch on, on this channel and on Orange Buzz and all of that, um, and I still think Texas is in a great position for Arch, but you got to – you can't risk losing out on him in like passing on a Devin Brown or no, you can't, like a Texas is not in a position like that. Like that. Yeah. Yeah. You can't do that. Best case you get both, but you don't want to risk, you know, losing a, a, an answer quarterback, as you mentioned. Frankly, even if Arch Manning said, Hey, I want to silently commit to, to Steve Sarkeesian right now, you still have to go after Devin Brown and Quinn yours if he ends up. And he's still, a, he's still a year away, over a year away from signing. Yeah, so it's not even exactly. like he'll be on campus next year. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, a lot can change in a, in a year. He may change his mind. If yeah. he does make a commitment uh, in mm -hmm. the spring, he may change his mind before he actually signs somewhere. So um, you mentioned AM and listen, our viewers of this don't want to talk too much about AM, but we'd be burying our head <laughs> yeah, in the sand yeah. if we weren't acknowledging. You know, it's funny mm -hmm. when you said the um, the Oklahoma game. I kind of go back to that Texas Oklahoma game, and that was the same day that Texas AM and Alabama played. Yeah. And at about noon of that day, I'm sitting here watching Texas and Oklahoma, and Texas is up by two scores, almost three scores, I think it was. And I'm thinking, oh my goodness, this is going to be a banner day for, for Texas yeah. and Texas recruiting. Texas loses. AM wins that night. AM's now on a four game win streak. Texas is on a four game losing streak. It's just, it just blows my mind the turn of momentum that this has taken. And AM last week, and Cole had a big 
recruiting weekend. They had a lot of guys on campus. Uh, they got two commitments, including the number two player in the country, uh, defensive lineman Walter Nolan out of Tennessee. I mean, those you mentioned Evan Stewart. Those are the kind of guys who are true difference, difference makers that will turn yeah. a program around. I mean, those they're not going to hit at 100% rate. I mean, recruiting is not an exact science. But Walter Nolan, I would bet a pretty substantial amount of money. He's going to be an impact player for Texas mm -hmm. A&M early and often, okay? Um, yeah. Evan Stewart's the same type of player. I mean, there's a reason those guys are five-star players. Uh, Devon Campbell's the same type of player. I mean, Texas doesn't have enough of those. They just don't have enough of it yeah. on the roster. Yeah. I, I went through the last four years. Texas had two five-stars. It was Bijan, and I can't even think who the other one was, to be honest with you. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, A&M, um, I think A&M had eight in counting. A&M's in a good position with a lot of others. Uh, Jatavian Sanders was the other one, by the way. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. he made a late jump up to the five star. Um, A&M had eight over the last four years in counting. They're in a good position on several others this, this year. So Texas has to find a way to not necessarily flip that momentum. Cause I don't know that you can flip that momentum this year. A&M's kind of a a moving train that's going to be hard to just you're not going to just shut that thing down you know you immediately you're going to, have to just take bits and pieces and chunks and texas mm -hmm. needs to build 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 some momentum it has to start this weekend against kansas you said it they have to play well they have to have good recruiting visits i think the crowd's going to have to be good for this this one i mean that's going to fact be a factor those kids kind of get caught up in a wave of emotion but you know this staff in year one it's a bit of a slippery slope that Steve Sarkeesian and his staff are battling. And I'm, again, I'm writing about that in my column too. Um, it's a vicious circle that just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger as A&M continues to build and Texas continues to struggle. Those things are trending the right direction. It, they have to get it start, start to get it turned around this weekend. It just, they have to have a big weekend this weekend, or it may be a tough cycle to break. Yeah. It's, you kind of mentioned, how you're feeling at halftime of the Oklahoma game. And, you know, A&M was coming off, you know, back-to-back -back losses. Texas looked like it was finally finding its groove. And it's just crazy how things can change so quickly. And uh, Texas really needs to find a way to stop, you know, the momentum that A&M um, is having. You know, they may not be able to stop what A&M is doing right now, but they need to at least have some momentum going in their direction as well to, you know, at least offset it. Um, you mentioned Walter Nolan. You need, you need those guys in the SEC, uh, Defensive line play is really where, where, you know, line scrimmage is where it's won, especially in that kind of conference. You know, Texas is obviously going to make the move there. We'll see if that's, you know, next year, 23. When, whenever it's going to be, they're going to have to load up on those kind of guys, like like a Campbell on the offensive line. Um, you know, I was actually down in, you know, Cyprus on Saturday. Got to see Harold Perkins. Um, Got to talk to him. He, first of all, I think his stat line was ridiculous. I think yeah, he had, like, I saw that. He had like 200 something yards and three touchdowns on six carries yeah. at running back. He had a pick that he almost returned for a touchdown. Like he's, he's everything you want in a linebacker. And, you know, Texas is, you know, in the, in that conversation, they're in this top group, but, you know, so is A&M and, you know, LSU is also another factor. Um, I saw him tweet, you know, about A&M, you know, it's, you'd be naive to think that these guys don't see the momentum that A&M's getting, you know, they're seeing the guys that a and you know, having committed to see difference makers or, and te like you said, Texas doesn't have that. Um, they don't really have many top 100 guys or top 250 guys. It's a few four stars, you know, they got Malik Murphy, who's big at quarterback, you know, Jaden Blue and Jermaine Miller are great running backs. They, Brandon Thompson and Armani Winfield at receiver, but they don't really have that one guy that people can point to. You know, a &M now has that guy in Walter Nolan um, Texas really needs to find a way to get at least make a push for that for those offensive linemen this week. Maybe they can hang their hat on, you know, Campbell, uh, Kelvin Banks, you know, one of those guys to at least flip it. But as far as Perkins goes, I think he, you know, I think AM and LSU are gonna be tough to beat, but he did say Texas is, you know, still up there. Um, he has a really good relationship with Malik Murphy. Um, and he's the you mentioned impact players and difference makers. He he's the definition of that, you know, Texas needs a guy like that in their defense to make that work. And um, he said he's going to, you know, take some visits to Michigan State, Miami, or kind of 
planning to. He'll see if he can make it back up to Austin. He already took his official visit. He, but he said he really enjoyed the game environments. You know, he was at the um, Rice game. I believe he was also at the, I want to say, Texas Tech game. He's at yeah, one he came in two weeks in a row. Yeah. And those were both yeah. unofficial visits. Yeah. Yeah. So I think Texas is definitely in the picture. And that's a guy that you need to get. You need to find a way to get in your class. Um, he's a guy that's connected to, you know, other recruits in the state that, um, you mentioned Evan Stewart is a guy that he would like to be teammates with. He mentioned, obviously, Malik Murphy, but also, you know, Campbell and um, Denver Harris. Those are guys that I think a ms done a good job. I don't want to talk too much about a and but they've done a good job of, you know, getting guys that people can want to play with. And Texas, they've got some commits, but they need to get that one dude that, you know, is, is able to pull guys together uh, and, if they can do that, I think they can – if they can make a big impression this weekend on those offensive linemen, on, on Devin Brown, maybe things can start rolling um, so they can get a Harold Perkins, a Denver Harris, those kind of guys. So this weekend's huge. Um, like I said, I don't think – I think everybody expects them to beat Kansas in football. You know, it is what it is. But I think they need a really good showing and just, you know, be able to sell these recruits and, hey, we've had a rough couple of weeks, but if we get you – if you if we get all you guys here, you know, Campbell – on the offensive line, Kevin Banks on the offensive line, Devin Brown, quarterback. If we get all you guys, uh, you know, we're going to be able to make a run and make some noise. So that's, I think that's going to be the point of emphasis on Saturday. Yeah, the one thing they can sell, the Texas staff, is like, yeah, we're on a four-game losing streak. It sucks. But we're close, other than Iowa State. Mm-hmm. I mean, Iowa State, they led that game yeah. at halftime. I mean, wheels fell off in the second <laughs> half. We're like, most of these losses, hey, man, we're one play away from winning these mm-hmm. games. And instead of being four and five, being potentially eight and one, as silly as that sounds, or seven and two, um, you know, and normally with offensive, every coach sells, oh, you can come in and play early. And normally, especially with offensive line, it's kind of a hollow sales pitch. It doesn't really have a lot of merit to it, but it really does with this, Mm. with this Texas offensive line. You're not just blowing smoke and you tell Devon Campbell and Cam Dewberry, uh, Kelvin Banks, hey man, all three of you would have a chance to start as freshmen, at least be in the two deep. I mean, most yeah, programs yeah. that they tell them that upper echelon programs are proud. Okay, you, yeah, you're just kind of yeah, butter yeah. me up a little Going bit. But with Texas, I mean, those guys mm-hmm. really would have a chance to come in and contribute right away. So, it, will it be enough? You know, I don't know, but that's certainly the sales pitch Texas has been using. You mentioned uh, Malik Ogbo and Ernest Green; they used it with those guys. I'm sure they'll use it again this weekend. Um, transitioning a little bit and then I want to ask you about your visit with uh JV and Toviano and then we'll put a bow on this um I did connect with a few of the Texas commitments on Sunday um just kind of routine mm-hmm. stuff nothing you know I wasn't calling them necessarily to say hey is your commitment still solid but it was just hey I haven't talked to you in a month or so I just want to check in see how things are going and the guys I talked to all said this is a, a bit of good news we'll <laughs> try to end on but they said uh, hey man we, we're all in a text chain you know, everybody's solid. We were all communicating Saturday night. Um, everybody's saying, hey, we need to get there and get this thing turned around. This sucks what's going on. But let's stay solid. Let's stay committed and we'll go get this thing turned around. So that's a bit of a good news for Texas. They do have the number five ranked recruiting class right now, uh, 22 commitments. Those dudes are all saying they're solid. Now, if we're being completely honest, Cole, I mean, I can't ignore the fact that Armani Winfield has taken a couple of visits to Michigan State. Uh, Jamari Miller visited Alabama. I mean, I mean, they're saying the right things to their peers, but we also can't ignore some of these other outside factors. But bottom line is you'd rather have those guys saying what they're saying in their group chat about, hey, man, let's get this thing turned around, but we're still solid. Let's get up there and be the ones who uh, right the ship, so to speak. You'd rather have them having that attitude than just getting frustrated and throwing their hands off. And- yeah maybe start having a wandering eye. So you um, rather have them committed than having to flip them and things like that. I, I think that kind of speaks to the, you know, character of guys that they have in this class. You know, Derek Brown was the guy mm-hmm. that committed literally right after I, you know, started with orange blood. So it wasn't that long ago. And he's been kind of that leader in that class. He, um, everybody I talked to says he's the guy that's recruiting them the hardest as from a, you know, player standpoint. Mm-hmm. Um, he's a guy that's connected with a lot of guys, uh, 
you always see him win or lose uh, during the week, uh, you know, tweeting about, you know, Texas. Still uh, love Texas. Yeah. Still, yeah, as soon as the game ended against yeah. Iowa State, he's like putting a picture with <laughs> Whenever him. Whenever somebody gets offered, he replies, hook them, or, you yeah, know, yeah. So just uh, I get think all these guys to Austin. Kind of he's, guy. he's tagging all the other yeah. teams in Austin. So, so I, think, you know, I think having I mean, a guy like that is huge, you know, not to cut you off. I think that's huge to have in a class, especially when you, when, like I said, recruits aren't going to pick a school based on one win or one loss or whatever. But I think it does help to have those kind of guys when there's a rough patch um, with the program you're committed to. Um, like you, said, you said it earlier, it'd be nice to have, visits. with all due respect to Derek Brown, it'd be nice yeah. to have someone like Evan Stewart leading that charge mm-hmm. or uh, yeah. Cam Dewberry or, you know, a five-star that's type. The, that's what they need. Yeah. Um, yeah uh, in, you know, those two offensive linemen commitments um, – Cole Hudson, you mentioned, and Connor Robertson, they've been very active in recruiting other offensive linemen. Yeah. Haven't confirmed yet, but I wouldn't be surprised if those dudes were uh, at the game. I think uh, as, as long as their playoff schedules don't com- conflict with Texas's game, I would yeah. I would not be surprised to see those linemen, two line of mm-hmm. commitments at the game uh, Saturday to do some recruiting as well. So I wanted to ask you, and we'll finish up, uh, JV and Toviano, uh, Rivals 100 defensive back. You saw him this mm-hmm. week. He's a guy that early on – I. Th- I would have probably picked Texas early on. I know Oklahoma's made a strong impression there. Yeah. When you visit yeah. Oklahoma, um, I mean, he's going to have the heavyweights in college football are going to be knocking on his door. So what's your vibe after seeing uh, Toviano last weekend? Yeah. Like you said, everybody's after him. Uh, that's my first time getting a chance to, you know, see L. Arrington Martin play and he lived up to the hype. You know, he's got the elite size you want in the DBs, like six, two, he's, long um uh, they're playing sam houston district rival they would not go to his side side of the field and speaks to how you know dominant of a player he is uh, just talking to him after the game you know he wouldn't give me anything too juicy right now you know he's got the playoffs um kind of where his mindset is but he did say that he's very aware of jimmo johnson's commitment you know another arlington defensive back rivals 250 who just committed to texas um told me that he's really close with a bunch of guys, including Jamil in Texas. They all have a huge group chat. They, he, I asked him about Jamil and he's like, yeah, we already kind of knew where he was going. Uh, we always know what the next move is for each guy. Um, we need to get on that group chat, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I tried to get some details. But he, our job's a lot he laughed. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But I think he was, you know, he's, uh, he told me that he was able to make some visits to Austin over the summer and, he really enjoyed it. He said he loves the atmosphere down there. Um, says it's very friendly, kind of like a family um, atmosphere environment that he really enjoys. Um, has, he said he hasn't been able to make too many visits um, this fall. You know, Arnt Martin Satine has, you know, legitimate, you know, state title aspirations. They got a good team. You know, RJ Cooper is committed to Stanford on their D-line. D they have some young underclassmen as well. But, you know, he likes Texas. Um, I think Oklahoma's another team that's, worth watching Alabama is a program that's after him um just getting out on campus over the summer I think was pretty big he spoke pretty highly of that and I think Longhorn's gonna be in the mix but you know um it's another thing they gotta prove it on the field um to be able to get that guy I think it does help to get Jamel Johnson in the boat pretty early that's a guy that I think they have it sounds like they have a pretty good relationship you know they're both in the Arlington area so I don't think that can hurt we talked about how Texas. I mean, Derek Brown, like we said, is a guy that's been doing the recruiting. But Jamon Johnson, you know, he's you know blue chip guy. He, uh, everybody knows who he is. I think getting him in the boat, being able to recruit uh, Toviano and those kind of guys, is going to pay off. So, um, but yeah, he's the guy. Denver Harris is the guy in the 2022 class, and Toviano is same kind of caliber prospect in the 2023 class. Yeah, every little bit helps. So if you get Jamel Johnson, you know, you've got him on board. If he can just give you one chip on your side of the scale for exactly. Texas. Every little bit helps with a guy like Toviano when you're recruiting against mm-hmm. Oklahoma's and the Alabama's of the world. And I mean, Ohio state will be after him. Everybody will be after him. So for sure. Um, well, yeah, I well, uh, appreciate this Cole. Thank you for joining me and thank you everybody thank for you. watching, giving us some time, you know, click the like button, click the subscribe button, please. We'll be doing some more of these. Um, we'll probably try to do one. Who knows Cole, maybe Sunday night, maybe Monday coming out of the, the big recruiting yeah. weekend that we talked about this week. We'll, uh, be talking to some of those guys and other sources about their visits, try to see how things go and get, get a vibe on, on how those visits go. We will do another uh, YouTube recruiting video on our uh, Texas Longhorn football channel here, uh, Orange Bloods channel. We'll do another one following up 
on the weekend. So again, hit the subscribe button uh, if you like the content and hit the like button for us. We appreciate everybody giving us some time and we will see everybody soon. Take care.